I could say, hey, Alexa, what's the score of the football game? And that would be driven by stats perform? Absolutely, 100%. It's really incredible the way that our data works and, and the depth of our data. There's so many different types of questions you can ask and all of it will, will come from our database. Hello and welcome to the Dactronics Experience Podcast. I'm Justin Oxner here with Matt Anderson. Today we're joined by Stephanie Brown, Partnership Manager of the Americas at Stats Perform. We're going to talk about what Stats Perform provides, their partnership with Dactronics, and much, much more. And we're here today with Stephanie. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. Matt, how are you doing in the bunker today? <laughs> I'm doing really good today. Thanks, Justin. New year, new you. Yep, new year. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Okay, Stephanie, we're going to talk about Stats Perform today. Can you give us a little background of yourself before we get into Stats Perform itself? Absolutely. Yeah, so I started my career uh, at this company called Bloomberg Sports, which was a, an offshoot of Bloomberg LP at the time. Um, we were a sports data analytics company. So kind of taking two passions of mine, math and data and analytics and in sports. And really I started my career kind of as a a talent uh, analyst, essentially uh, building stories rooted in data uh, and, and telling those stories, helping, helping media entities, particularly broadcasters tell those stories in really unique ways through analytics. So I'm really trying to, you know, it's kind of at the beginning of, of the revolution of sports analytics and, and data analytics. And we were trying to get that out into the public and, and help fans really understand um, why this is becoming a movement. So I started my career there. And, and over time, as I've kind of taken on different roles um, throughout Stats Perform, uh, who ended up acquiring Bloomberg Sports back in 2014, uh, it, it's led me to where I am today, where I currently manage our partnerships uh, in the Americas at, at Stats Perform. And what that means is uh, our partnership team is really building this ecosystem of third party companies who you know, can take our data and our analytics and, and other kind of various solutions and you know, alongside these partners really amplify it on behalf of our end customers so that together, you know, Stats Perform and our partners are kind of creating innovative solutions that the market can then take advantage of. So it's really exciting um, what I do. It's, you know, kind of taking where I, I started with my roots, bringing data and analytics uh, to tell stories to, to media entities. And um, now we're, we're enabling partners to be able to help their customers tell uh, those same stories um, and, and being able to bring it out to the market at scale. Awesome. And that, I'm thinking about, you know, we have we have many of our customers already that are familiar with Stats Perform, but just trying to think of those that are they're listening today that maybe aren't. Could you maybe just give like some examples or an overall thing about what Stats Perform is? Absolutely. So, you know, the, the 30,000 foot view, Stats Perform, what we do is we capture um, this incredible amount of data um, and when I say when I say data, that's everything from as simple as scores and schedules to as detailed as you know x, y coordinates for where events are happening on you know the field or the pitch or the court. And uh, we're taking this incredible amount of data and putting a layer of artificial intelligence on top of it to be able to produce solutions um, for there's kind of three main markets that that we operate in. Uh, the first and the largest is fan engagement. So really anywhere that a fan can consume content, um, consume sports content, um, whether that's television, newspaper, your, your Amazon Alexa, mm-hmm. um, you're, we're powering all of that sports content within Alexa. Um, anywhere that a fan can engage with sports, um, Stats Perform is there um, providing uh, those, those solutions. Um, you know, the second market we play in is, is, of course, the gambling space. Um, incredibly important to sports mm-hmm. books uh, to be able to have the right data at the right time as quickly as possible to run their operations. So um, that's kind of our second market. And, and third is, of course, team performance. So coaches and, and scouts and uh, agents and you know anybody kind of in the team performance world, of course, wants to use data uh, to you know, put a better product out on the field or the pitch or um, wherever you are in the world, what you call what you call your <laughs> field. Uh, uh, the stats perform as a as a very global company. I I 
mix up my my pitch and my field and <laughs> and now I've started I started calling soccer football it's, it's oh, I'm yeah. all over the I'm all over the map <laughs> but uh yeah so so you know the, the 30,000 foot view is is really um we kind of pioneered this data world back in the early 80s and um over time we've evolved where you know what we're doing now is taking this kind of gold mine of data that we sit on and, um, pr- you know, through artificial intelligence are, are producing solutions that are, are meant to revolutionize the world of sports and kind of those three, three main categories. Okay. So you said something kind of interesting. I'm thinking like this weekend, there's a, or, um, this weekend there's still playoff football going on. Yep. And if I'm running around the house doing something and my kids have taken over the TV, I could say, Hey, Alexa, what's the score of the football game? And that would be driven by stats perform. Absolutely. 100%. It's really, it's really incredible. Um, you know, the, the way that our data works and, and the depth of our data, there's so many different types of questions you can ask. Um, and all of it will, will come from our database. Um, it's, uh, you know, if, if you're, uh, working with Cortana as well through, through Microsoft or, uh, okay. you know, Google, uh, if you're Googling the Google one box, uh, that pops up. Um, yeah, all of that comes from the stats perform team. I'm, gl- I'm glad Justin, we don't have an Alexa in the room right now because we're recording a <laughs> podcast and I thought what you said that I looked around to see if something was going to kick on and tell us right now. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I actually got, um, over Christmas, I, I got gifted a, an echo, my, my first echo. And, um, usually when I talk about how staff perform works with Alexa, I, I never think twice about it, but recently in the last two weeks, uh, every time I talk about stats perform working with, with Alexa, <laughs> my Alexa turns on. Yeah. I'm, saying, I'm like, Oh man. <laughs> I had the, I never thought about getting Alexa, but I got one as like a prize one time at a convention or something. And it was, it was the same thing when TV commercials came on oh, and they yeah. even said it. And all of a sudden it was like, it was saying Alexa order something, right? And I immediately remember running over and unplugging and be like, no, 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 stop saying Don't that. Don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can change that. You can actually have it um, answered to Echo. Oh, nice. So you can change it to like, I think there's three or four different options. So we actually had to do that for a while. The kids got too smart. <laughs> 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 so kind of come back to <laughs> stats perform then, Stephanie, it's, you have these three main areas um, that you kind of focus on then. What what are the different markets? And I know you mentioned globally, but is it is it, you know, and if it's all professional sports, it's college sports, uh, kind of how does that reach look? Yeah, absolutely. So the majority of what we do is in the professional sports space. Um, of course, collegiate sports, uh, particularly football and basketball. Um, and, you know, for some schools uh, and, and some, you know, cities, they, they really are the equivalent of, of a professional sport in terms of popularity and how much people, people love them. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, football, uh, college football and college basketball, we, we certainly do a lot of data capture for, um, we do a little bit outside of that. Um, we do a little bit in, in college hockey, college baseball. Um, you know, beyond that, um, we've been asked about high school a million and one times it's it's the trickiest sport just because uh the scale of it is so big and, <laughs> yes. you know <laughs> so many up, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a tricky beast to figure out from an operation <laughs> standpoint so we haven't gotten into the high school space but we do some youth um youth coverage as well you know stats perform as a as a global business or uh, previously i was with stats llc we, we merged uh back in 2019 uh, with the Perform Group, uh, which which had a really large European footprint, and the Perform Group um, really was kind of the the global leader, and, and obviously through Stats Perform still is the global leader in kind of sports data. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, soccer data, and uh, so we work really closely with a lot of the leagues, you know, globally, MLS being one of them, and uh, you know certainly a, a globally there's some some youth coverage that we'll do um, because of course the the youth. Uh, space in, in soccer is a really good feeder into the professional space. So um, we do some youth coverage as well through through soccer. Um, but uh, yeah, beyond that, it's largely professional sports coverage. Okay. And then you, you partnered with Dactronics, of course, recently. Um, can you tell us how that partnership kind of led into um, what we're working together on? Yeah. So it, it's interesting with with Dactronics. We'd we'd actually been partnering with with the Dactronics team for for quite some time. It's it's been several years, um, but it always been very uh, kind of customer driven, passive, opportunistic. Where um, you know, 
Edactronics customer uh, might come to Stats Perform and say, "Hey, you know, we'd love to show some some out of town scores in our in our uh, venue." And we'd work with the Dectronics team from a technical standpoint to ensure that everything was running very smoothly, that the data would would run through. Largely, it's through ribbon boards, um, and uh, we'd make sure everything worked. But again, it was it was very customer driven. So Stats Perform, we built our our sports partner uh, network um, in late 2019. So um, the uh, we call them we call it the Spin Network, the the Sports Partner Intelligence Network. Uh, so we built this team in late 2019, and um, as we started to think about who who were you know good partner candidates for for this team, um, Dactronics immediately came to mind because we had so many venues that we've worked on together um, over time um, that it just seemed to make sense to kind of flip the script on our on our partnership. Uh, so rather than work in a kind of a passive, um, reactive way to what customers want. You know, let's let's get out ahead of of market trends. Let's work more proactively together. Um, start exploring what else do we have. You know, Stats Perform has this incredible database. You know, Dectronics has this great platform by which the data can then be visualized and and displayed at a venue. Um, let's let's look beyond kind of the scores that we've passively done for all these years and figure out how we bring more analytics to the table, um, more data to the table, um, more insight to the table. That venues can then take advantage of. So uh, it was really a, a, a no-brainer and a, a natural fit to formalize our partnership with Dactronics. Um, it, I think I think we formalized it in in mid uh, 2020. It, it made complete sense to kind of just flip the script on the passive relationship and uh, become more actively uh, aligned on on what we can offer to the market. And that's what I was curious about too. Had you heard of the the company or the name Dactronics kind of prior to this? But you, I had that question written down, but you answered that already by saying kind of <laughs> through these customer examples and everything. Um, and I'm just kind of curious too, because right there's there's a side of stats that you know from Dactronics standpoint, we want to get them so we can put them out on our display so that people can see them. Um, I don't know if it gets down into the timing though, right? But so like when it comes to timing events we also have the control equipment that does the actual timing like shot clock stuff like that does that kind of flow in through your system as well so it's kind of like we're helping put data in and display it today we don't uh, actually so uh, a lot of the kind of data that you know dactronics captures through the shot clock and, and scoreboard and stuff um it's held a little bit separately. I think where the the key difference uh for you know, the key difference where stats perform kind of enhances the data capabilities that Dactronics has is uh, looking, and again, kind of what I mentioned where we started was the out-of-town scores, um, where you guys are capturing the data in the stadium, um, you know, live, you know, how, how much time is left in the quarter, those sorts of things. Um, we're able to show what's happening in other venues and we can bring that into the stadium. And then, um, you know, kind of beyond the, the live data that, that Dactronics is uh, bringing to the table, we're also bringing in some more contextual data. So um, think about things like, you know, a player come, comes to bat and uh, we can we can provide uh, split stats uh, for, you know, how a player plays given this particular uh, contextual situation. Maybe there's runners in scoring position. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're, they're up against a certain pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, there's a variety of uh, additional stats that we bring to the table um, where, you know, Dactronics is, is more playing in that kind of live in venue uh, data space, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And you mentioned the, the situational statistics, like the guy comes up to bat and he's hitting this percent versus lefties. And there's a lefty on the mound, that type of on thing. On a sunny day. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a dome <laughs> or the, outside. On the 4th yeah. of July. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bringing all those extra stats to just display for fans to see so they could say, oh, this is interesting. He should do well here based on his, his history at the plate against these situations. Um, and I believe you had a, a story published recently that kind of went into the the fan experience with those additional stats. Can you tell us a little bit about that story and, and what it explains? Yeah. Yeah. So we had a, a great thought leadership piece that was uh, produced by our team. And um, it kind of talks about how, you know, in this in this age where you know personalization is key and deeper storytelling is key, you know, you also think about today, a, a lot of people, when they watch from home, they have... Uh, 
10 different devices in front of them, uh, looking at further information that, that maybe the, the first screen isn't providing them. Um, in, when, when you get to a venue, um, you know, people still want to have all of those additional pieces of content that maybe they're not getting from just, you know, watching the action on the field. So it's, it's become even more important uh, to be able to show deeper storytelling and uh, cater to all of these kinds of people who, you know, some people are casual fans and maybe don't care so much about the stats. Uh, some people are are avid fans and want to want you know every nugget of information they can get. And then there's of course people in between. So um, you know you're you're trying to cater to everybody, and you're also trying to give the added context that people have gotten used to from you know having second screens open at home uh, while watching. So I think uh, you know the the thought leadership piece really talked about how um, you know that's the the trend that we're seeing a lot of venues start to to lean towards is you know how do we how do we tell better stories in stadium through data uh, that ultimately, you know, get people excited and, uh, you know, want to drive them into the stadium experience? Because you are seeing, um, you know, the, the data shows that, you know, year over year, uh, you know, fan attendance and stance has, has gone down now, obviously. 2020 aside, where uh, a lot <laughs> right. of people couldn't be there uh, prior to that, even the the trends were that, you know, there are less fans and stands. So, you know, stadiums are really having to get um, creative in in building a, a better experience so that fans start to to drive back into stadium. And, and I think data driven storytelling is is kind of the the way of the future and, and the way to help reverse that trend. And I'm even thinking, you know, we're talking about 2020 being a, a unique year, but mm-hmm. it's even we've been hearing from customers is that the places that are allowing some capacity to, to attend events, whether it's, you know, a certain percentage of how many people can come in. But the importance of being able to get fans engaged in a game is more important now than ever, because yeah. some places are still trying to get some kind of a home field or home court advantage. And if you don't have as many people as you normally do in there, you can't have them, you know, not engage that entire time. So <laughs> I was just kind of curious if you've, if you've heard anything kind of from your side, then from because of everything with COVID, is it, how has that been handled from the stat side? Is it still kind of the same story that you, you're really just hitting on that engage fan aspect of it? Yeah. So I think, you know, it's, it's definitely the engage fan aspect. It's, it's, yeah. How do you keep fans excited, interested, you know, and, and, uh, how do you tell the positive story so that that fans are are staying engaged? And I think you're right. You want that that atmosphere where people are excited. So, um, you know, I, I haven't necessarily seen this specifically, but just thinking about it now, you know, if if your home team is is losing and uh, maybe fans are starting to leave the stadium or or you know maybe the tone of the stadium has has died down a bit, um, I could envision there being um, a whole bunch of storytelling about comeback situations and, um, you know, trying to drive a positive narrative to keep mm-hmm. the spirits up and keep people excited and, and, and rooting for their team. Um, so, you know, while I haven't necessarily seen that specifically happen, I could absolutely see, see that as, um, you know, a, a way, uh, to, you know, keep people engaged throughout the entirety of the event. Yeah, like this quarterback has this many um, comebacks in his career. Could this be another one? And and you kind of, you know, leave it up to the event producer <laughs> to pull that stat, display it to keep people from from leaving and keep them engaged in the game if if they're down by a couple touchdowns or something like that. That's a an interesting aspect to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Or you think about like, uh, yeah, two two minute drills. Uh, you've got mm-hmm. you know this kind of success rate or. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's such a great idea. Um, so whoever whoever uh, hears this and, and takes our idea, give us some credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to keep them there for you. Yeah, I'm thinking about too. We, we're talking about how important it is for the fans, right, to keep them engaged in these games. But there's also a a sponsorship aspect to this, right, too, because when we talked about when when fans aren't engaged and I'm thinking about maybe just our displays in a venue because right, we make displays. Yep. So um, if the, you want them to be looking at the displays more often, right. And so sometimes you get advertisers that are worried that people don't look up there because they're numb to advertisements. But if you can try and get relevant data on the displays, you can get them engaged that way. Then it increases that sponsorship value, right? Because now people are actually looking at their message. 100%. I think sponsorships is, it's so key to, to why telling stories in stadium, it's going to be the trend of the future. It's not just because people are getting 
engaged and interested, it's because it's a new revenue stream for a lot of these venues. It's, it's a way to help your, help your brands rather than slapping a logo on something. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's, a, you know, sponsors don't want that anymore. They don't yeah. want to just slap a logo. They, they want their story to be told in a, in a, you know, way that, that aligns with, you know, exactly what message they're trying to put out there. So mm-hmm. Um, if you can do that through some creative data storytelling, um, like for example, uh, we work with a couple of venues out in Germany um, in the, the Bundesliga, and uh, there's there's a, a particular uh, club, particular venue who works with SAP as a sponsor. Now SAP obviously they're in the analytics world. That's you know their their business, and so um, you know what they've been able to do is is take our data. And build this. It's it's like a pregame or I guess pre-match, uh, kind of a, a quick thirty-second show reel that kind of gives you the head-to-head data to know uh, a quick insight on a particular player to watch, um, a heat map of you know where a particular player uh, typically has their touches, and it all kind of rolls through this video that's powered. You know, the the front end and, and back end of the video is uh, powered by SAP. And it really helps SAP tell that story of, you know, hey, um, we're an analytics company. Check out these analytics for for the match. And, you know, it's it's a it's a really great brand story. Like I said, runs runs on runs on the screen kind of pre match and uh, for every single game. So it's it's really interesting how you can get creative on, uh, you know, really with whatever a brand is trying to put out there, uh, get creative with data storytelling. And, and you saying brands don't want to just slap up a logo mm-hmm. reminded me, of, I think it was a research that um, National Sports Forum did about three years ago where they interviewed a lot of sports brands and asked what like concerns they were having. One of the top results was sponsorship soup, I believe is what they yeah. call it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. Like you walk in and the whole place is just blanketed with logos. And that was always like a concern that they don't want that because... To your point, they want to be able to tell a story, send a message and do more than just logo placements. Yeah, exactly. And you mentioned that you do some of these stats with um, sports books and, and possibly the, the betting side of things. We had a, a couple of recent installations out in Las Vegas. So I'm curious, how do you tie in for for the sports books? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's no secret venues are, are going to start building sports books or, mm-hmm. you know, in their in their stadium. And um, obviously, that's going to be a huge revenue stream. So you know, for us, what what we've seen, you know, in the, I guess in the media world um, that, you know, when media currently is trying to capitalize on, on betting, um, it's all about creating a story that it, it's funny because it, it all kind of comes back to storytelling, right? It's, it's creating a story that is going to want to get a better to go make that bet or mm-hmm. inform them on, you know, so, so they feel educated, you know, a better doesn't want to a better doesn't want to make a bet and, and put their money on the line unless they feel like they're making an educated decision. Um, and, and I think that's where it kind of comes back to storytelling. How do, how do we build the narrative um, so that you feel like you are making an educated decision when you place that bet? And so, you know, how that translates into the venue world, I think, is, you know, as as venues build, you know, little sections in, in their in their um, stadium where, there is a sports book and I'm certain there's a lounge and a bar and Mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And the signage that runs through there, it's providing things, you know, more than just the odds, which we certainly have. Um, but more than just the odds, um, it's that insight. It's, it's those split stats. It's, um, that historical, like we, we do, um, some historical betting, um, insights where we can, we can say, Hey, the last, you know, 10 times that team A and team B have played, um, the over has been hit eight of those 10 times. Mm. Um, we, we have those capabilities. Um, so being able to, again, it's, it's not, um, necessarily saying, Hey, you should bet on team a or team B, but Mm -hmm. it's saying, Hey, here, here's what the numbers tell us historically. Um, here's what current, you know, player performance trends are saying, um, you know, here's your current injury lineup. I mean, that's yeah. super important. That's a like, big one. <laughs> here's your lineup. Here are your injuries. Yeah. Um, it's it's really just here's all of the information that you need to be able to make that decision. Um, and so I think when it when it comes to the betting space, um, it, it's really going to be all about kind of that storytelling in stadium. And then of course, stats perform as a business. Like I kind of mentioned in the beginning, 
um, artificial intelligence is is really the layer that we're putting on top of all of our data. And so with our um, you know data science team that we have in-house, there's a lot of predictive content that comes out from us, uh, live win probabilities, player projections. Um, so you know if if a venue did want to actually say, you know go, go beyond here's what here's what history tells us or, or current trends tells us, and they want to say, well, here's even what, you know, stats performs data scientists say in terms of predictive, um, that's certainly something that can run through as well and, and, or be sponsored, right? If you've got, um, you know, a FanDuel or DraftKings sponsored venue, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's you know, the, the predictive data brought to you by FanDuel or DraftKings. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there's a whole lot of ways within the betting world to, to tie in sponsors, um, and, and then ultimately convert uh, convert fans into to betters by educating them. Right. And I'm, I admit I am not a huge better. I hear a couple buddies every once in a while say, oh, well, this team's horrible against the spread this year. And I pretend to know what that means and nod and smile along with them. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's the type of data that you could provide as well and, and keep people informed of those types of trends, well, as you've mentioned. Well, I hear these Absolutely. things that, that you even brought up more. So I listen to a variety of different, you know, sports podcasts. And there's, it's more and more over the last year, there's always at least some part of the, of the mm-hmm. episode or something where they will talk about that. Or someone drops like a knowledge bomb to say, did you know that Ben Roethlisberger hasn't covered the spread and this and that? Like someone always does those situational stats, yeah. like you're saying, Stephanie, on these podcasts about sports betting. So it all just kind of comes back around. Yeah, 100%. And it's, what's so interesting about sports betting as a, again, as a kind of a, a narrative is you, you might see a game that's a blowout. And so maybe fans are tuning out and they don't, they don't care so much, but if that game, uh, that game might still be important to a better, because even though it's a blowout for the non-betting fan, um, they may be nearing the over under mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And yep. so it's like, <laughs> it's like, well, nope, this is important to the better. So uh, it it's funny how, you know, in terms of interest in a game, you know, betting can, can really turn it around or uh, cr- create some interest where, yeah. you know, pre betting, there might not be interest in these blowouts, but in the betting world. Absolutely. That's where you hear people upset that the runner on a breakaway took a knee or went out of bounds at the one yard line <laughs> instead of getting those points for him. Yeah. Or safety right at the right. end of a yeah. game. Not or... just fantasy points, but like <laughs> <Yeah>. actual <laughs> betting points too. And maybe that's something that kind of makes me think of all these different stats. Do you do anything with fantasy stat? You just said fantasy football, Justin. Yeah. Made me think of that. Sorry. So do you have any involvement in like fantasy stats as a part of this? Yeah, we absolutely do. We work with a lot of the fantasy um, outlets out there. Um, if, if not all of them. So fantasy is a big part of what we do, especially in our predictive, the predictive side of our business. Um, we project for every single player, um, what their kind of statistical lineup is going to be. So, or, or sorry, uh, statistical output is going to be. So, mm-hmm. yep. you know, for, uh, bet for basketball, right. Uh, we're projecting for each player, um, points, rebounds, assists, um, you know, block steals, those kinds of things. Um, so essentially what we can do then is if we're projecting kind of what their stat line is going to be, you can then apply fantasy formulas to it to figure out what's their projected fantasy total. So we actually, we have a data file that auto does that for FanDuel and DraftKings. So we can say, you know, obviously those are the two, two of the biggest yep. daily fantasy. So, uh, it was no brainer to, to do that, but, um, you know, we'll be able to take their fantasy scoring system. And, and so we can say, okay, from this projected stat line, um, this player's projected fan duel output is, is X and, and, uh, you know, DraftKings output is Y, but, you know, if, if you didn't play either of those, um, play either of those platforms and, and you had a different preferred, you know, fantasy platform, you could really just take the projected, uh, stat output and just apply your own formula to it. Yeah. That's really interesting to hear that side of it too. Cause you think about stats and it's usually, Oh, that's just the, the win loss and who, <laughs> who got as many points as the other, but you, you can go way in depth, especially with the betting side and the fantasy side. And, and you guys cater to all those stat categories. And that, yeah. and, th- and this might be, I might be answering my own question as I ask it, Stephanie, but um, you know, we, we talked about, Already all the different areas that that stats and data reach, right? We've talked about, I mean, you got your main three categories too, but there's, we've talked about fantasy football, betting, it's helping out with coaches and players. There's all these different levels. Sponsors, fan engagement. 
Um, and you talked about kind of you've been in the stats world for for quite a while. What are some like the biggest changes, like things that maybe you see now that you that you see now that you didn't back then? That doesn't make any sense. Things that <laughs> things that maybe like um, if you think back to when you first started, like what are some of the biggest changes? Is it just the number of volume of stats kind of? I think it's volume of. I think it's, um, you know, certainly acceptance of it. When when I first started, you know, way back when providing analytics to, you know, to teams, I think there was a lot of hesitation to, well, is the casual fan going to understand this? If I say it on air, that was obviously where I started was really television. If I mm-hmm. say it on air, will they know what I mean? And that was always a, a, a really difficult hurdle to, to kind of jump. Um, but I think fans have really started to understand. And the other thing I would say is, you know, when I first kind of started and, and we'd say data analytics, um, you know, people, people immediately would associate that with some of the more advanced kind of concepts, like in baseball, WOBA, or um, in, in the NBA, true shooting percentage, things that are definitely advanced concepts. There's, you know, they take a little bit longer to, to articulate what they mean. What, what has become, you know, so people were kind of afraid of analytics because that's what they associated with analytics. And they were like, that is way too difficult to explain to the casual fan on air. Um, what I think has kind of flipped is um, people don't necessarily, you know, associate analytics with those difficult concepts anymore. Mm-hmm. There are concepts that can be fairly, fairly simple that are analytical in nature um, and, and relatively easy to explain. Um, for example, one kind of, you know, it, it's an advanced analytic, but, um, you know, pitch usage. You're, if, you, if you look at, you know, every pitch that a, a you know, a pitcher is thrown in a season and you classify the pitch types and then, uh, you know, you say, okay, how often does a pitcher use each pitch in his arsenal? That's advanced. That's analytics. Um, to be able to say, you know, his fastball percent is, you know, 85%. That, that's analytics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think, and, and that's, that's a very easy concept to understand. And so I think that is one of the biggest shifts I've seen is people being afraid of, I'll never be able to explain analytics. I don't want it um, to, Hey, there's, there are easy concept analytics out there. Um, let's, let's embrace those. I thought you were going to ask a question, Justin. Sorry. No, I got, no. <laughs> I just didn't I want to talk. I blew you guys away with no. that answer, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like um, when you say stats that people might not understand or, or that they're using regularly now and how to explain them, it reminded me of Moneyball and like how they use oh. Moneyball <laughs> and, and to to build a team. Was it the A's that they built? Yep. And oh, yeah, yep. so it, it just kind of reminded me of that, like, oh, this this pitch percentage or this person's on base percentage. And we just want to go with the stats to build this team type of thing. And yeah, and I'm thinking you said it's it's a matter of making sure they understand it. Right. So it's when people also hear data and stats it's not just spreadsheets and numbers just being mm-hmm. put up everywhere, even though there might just be numbers or those overall stats, but the visual side of it is so important, right? Like even going through your, your website and looking at all the different visuals that the stats help drive, like that's a huge factor as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you think about, I think data visualization is, is just, it's so key um, because at the end of the day, if if you're trying to relay a concept that is a little bit more difficult, people are much better visual learners than they are you know, hearing things. So if, if we're able to uh, not only provide the stat, but provide a visual that helps, you know, um, you know, help someone understand the stat, it's, it's so much better. I'm trying to think of a, a good example. Um, you know, if you've got like, uh, think about like a heat map on a basketball court, right? You could, you could talk about, um, you know, a, a player uh, or a team, you know, maybe their corner three percentage um, in terms of, you know, how often do they shoot from the corner three, you might give them, um, you know, be able to, to say a number. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then if you give them, if you actually show a heat map that, that helps articulate that point where you've gotten the corner three, it's, you know, a lot redder than it is up, you know, at the arc or, you know, top of the key or whatever. I think, I think it's really powerful. Yeah, or if it's if it's Dame or Curry, you got to guard the logo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll shoot it from anywhere. Yep, I'm thinking, and the importance of being. I'm, I keep thinking about bringing it back to like deck trunks and displays and ma- the matching up of all this. But it's also important to be able to make sure that all this stuff can happen fast, right? Because again, if if it's a more faster pace sport, right? But you want to be able to get these stats out there, 
We want people to be able to see them in a very timely fashion. You can't wait too long to see some of these things come up. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's crucial to have your data be quick. And it's it's crucial, um, you know, in my mind, I think it's also pretty crucial to have tools that can curate the data quickly. So so if you are, it's not just the, the live data being fast, but it's, um, okay, we're in a, a particular situation, you know, it's late in the game and close, and I need to pull together uh, a storyline about that. It's having the tools, you know, you're not necessarily looking at uh, the live data, but maybe you're looking at, at this past season, how have they done in these similar situations? You need to have tools that are fast to help you pull up those storylines. So data being fast is important. And then the tools that, you know, help you craft those stories uh, being fast are also very important. I think we would 100% agree with you there. I know <laughs> <Yep>. all that. <laughs> um, and just to, to kind of wrap up today, if, if you um, are listening and you want to hear more about Stats Perform, we will put their uh, their website link in the show notes. Um, we'll also have a link to the Stat Perform insight piece that they, they had published in, in the show notes as well. So we will give you many ways to follow up and, and learn more information. But um, Stephanie, thank you for coming on and, and sharing all this information. I think I can speak for Matt when I say we both <laughs> learned a lot here today. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I knew <laughs> quite a bit about Stats Perform, but I learned a lot more just from talking to you today. So this is great. Excellent. No, Matt and Justin, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here and uh, excited to share my my passion for, for analytics with, uh, with the listeners. So really, really thankful you invited me on. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Great. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Dectronics Experience Podcast. Please subscribe at your favorite place to listen to podcasts to keep up with our latest episodes. 